Here's to my old teammates. I play yeah. with all the last half so far. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding, right? Like, Jesus. It's like, <laughs> you got yeah. both of us. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, I had both of you guys. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I'm, obviously, you were my teammate for, uh, you know, three years. Then uh, your brother was my teammate, you know, in the Grand Rapids and in Detroit. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun times, man. So, uh, so, uh, so do you guys were so difficult, so difficult, you know, like so, so different. No, so difficult, so right. different. Yeah, I uh, know. Yeah, so different is right. I mean, my brother is about as mellow as you possibly could get. Yeah. <laughs> and no, speaking but... of Kitchener, I just had to look up. I'm like, geez, when were we there? Like, it was so. I long. know when I when Cole asked the questions. I think I, I came 05. It was 05. I, we were drafted 05, but you were there the year before, so you were probably 04. Mm -hmm. so i was there in 03 was 03, okay 03. 03 04 was the first year i just had to look it up which is yeah. sad is that is it we're, are we getting that old that i've got to look yeah. up you know? well I, yeah yeah we are yeah. We, we are we are man crazy but, uh, so yeah but it was fun man i don't know what your you know i don't know did you were you drafted in the uh the import draft to kitchener i was, I was drafted yeah as an import yeah so okay. yeah and now you were, uh, you were, uh, were you with the U.S. program first and then you decided to join uh, the OHL or? Yeah. So mine was, my, I had a weird route, like, cause my routes or my rights were actually with Sault Ste. Marie at the time. And I was with the, with the mm -hmm. national team mm -hmm. and then all this stuff ended up happening. I ended up getting traded from my rights ended up getting traded from Sioux to Kitchener. And then, you know, I, at the time, junior hockey for American kids was, a little it was probably a little less popular than it was now and it was more you know strict college or uh -huh. uh, or junior route and it was dissuade probably at the time um to go there unless you wanted to have kind of those nhl aspirations right and once my rights got traded though and you looked at the guys that were there and the coaching staff with with uh yeah. you know pete and spotter and those guys it, it kind of completely changed the trajectory of how we were looking at things and at yeah. the time i was committed to boston university to go so it was a big decision to be able to yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, make yeah. that move but i mean geez what a what a scenario we both walked into i mean it's it's crazy to look at the guys that we've played with that have went on and done great things with their yeah. with hockey careers and their lives after and the coaches that are still bumping around and it's it's been fun yeah even you know what i looked at it back now as like like me coming from overseas you know obviously you went a different pad i went from a different pad it's kind of like um what do you call it it's like I feel like we did the right decision, you know, because if I, I feel like if I would have went somewhere else, maybe that didn't prepare me to make it to the next level, you know, go through the American Hockey League, you know, mm -hmm. go make it to the NHL. So it was like a right, right decision that I did when I look at back, you know, would I change anything back then? Maybe I would. I, if I would have speak more English back then when I joined the team with you guys, you know, like I remember like we we're very close, all of us, you know, you, Boris, myself, Boris Valabic, so some of the guys uh, that, that they remember. You know, but I wish back that I would have just spoke more English and came more prepared. But it just, uh, it was so hard not knowing English, not learning in a school, not picking up anything in school. So I just wish in that moment, I wish I would have enjoyed more like, you know, being around like, uh, like, you know, because the language barrier, you know, I'm sure you're familiar. You played in your career, you played like, later on, you played in Swiss, Russia, uh, uh, DL, uh, Germany. So it's difficult, you know, the, the different culture, you know, coming over. And then going to Europe, uh, you know, you can you can talk about it too as well. You know, for you, what kind of experience that was uh, later yeah. on your career. And it's interesting too. Like, I mean, you look at the dynamic of the way that the world has changed since we were there as young kids, right? The access to things is it's so much easier. Like, imagine coming in being a junior player now with the internet as you know as robust as it is and the access to the English or the access to the, you know, different material to be able to educate yourself going in on it. I mean, that starkly different from the time when you came into Kitchener to when I was going overseas. I mean, you had the ability to Google stuff quickly and reach out and you know, and you knew more guys too, right? You knew you had been, I had been playing longer at that time. So it was pretty easy to like rip through yeah. and be like, okay, I know this guy, this guy, this guy, I'll reach out to this guy and ask what the city's uh -huh. like the guys are like what the coach is like so i mean you had a way way more difficult uh 
thing to come over here. I mean, how was that though? Like I, I, I always wondered this with the guys coming back now, knowing what I know about the European hockey and playing and some of these teams mm-hmm. over there, like what was the, what was the thought process and the mindset when you decided to come over versus like staying over there in like your community? Well, I think it'd be technically a community program and like kind of go up through those ranks and play for that pro team and then come back over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you were a 17 year old kid, you know, you believe your agent, you already, you already had an agent back then, you know, and you, <laughs> his vision was obviously play in NHL, but as a 17 year old, like you, you just, you know, you gave up your family, you gave up your school, you know, your, your own country. And then you decided to join completely different world, you know? So right. for me coming over, it was, it was a big decision, you know, like I left everything behind, just like straight, straight line of hockey, you know, like it's just, but it worked out. I mean, it worked out great. I wouldn't change anything, but again, just, you know, coming, you know, you know, coming into, to, to uh, OHL or kitchen, not going to school, you know, gave up a school. It's just, it's, it's a risk, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. You know, you were aware of that. We played with some oh, yeah. good players that, you know, they, uh, fortunately they didn't make it to the next level, you know, and it's, it, it's tough, you know, it's, it's tough. Not everyone is lucky enough. Oh, for sure. I think, you know, we were now looking back on it, you know, you talk to some people about your time, you know, in playing and before Kitchener, after Kitchener, the thing that, that I, and I was just talking to somebody about this uh, the other day um, that that we, we both played against. And, and I was like, you know, the thing, the thing about Kitchener that was so special and there's very different, there's, there's only a few teams that were able to capture that was, the, the amount of internal competitiveness that we had, even just on our own team. I mean, if you look at, you know, the guys we had on our defensive core, it wasn't like we had one guy who was essentially so much better than everybody else. We were all, I felt really good players, but also really competitive against each other. And we were pushing ourselves to uh-huh. be better every day in practice. And then obviously we had Pete in there who was barking yeah. at us all the time, pushing us to get better. Yeah. But it was that I think made us better as much as we were all probably like, Oh my God, you could never and, take a day off, you know? And you know, what's so funny. I just thought about it that that one year that how stuck we were, I'm just, I'm how stuck we were as a team, like on a defense, it was you, Boris, myself, Matt Pepe, you know, like I just, I don't know. Did we lose the Owen sound that, that year? Like in the first round, do you remember that? Like we were stacked, like we were supposed to go very far. I don't know what, what ended up happening, but you know, like that year we were, we had three defensemen drafted first round and going to NHL. Like it's, right. it's like, it's unheard of, you know? And then you have, and you had uh, Mark Fraser. Sorry, I completely forgot about Fraser too. You know, he was a tough guy. You know, I just, yeah, we were stock, man. We were, uh, yeah. we were. Well, and it's interesting too, when you look down through it, like, I mean, the amount of leaders that were on within the organization too, like all the way up from like being Kowski, who was running the team to Pete and, and mm-hmm. Spotter. Then, you, you know, like when Mike Richards was there and Clarkey and all these guys that went down, like, it was just like littered with guys that were constantly there to push you to the next mm-hmm. Level yeah. internally like we were just like battling against each other which i think made everybody so much yeah. better but also the crazy thing is is like as you know in the same breath that that can potentially eat a team alive because everyone's trying to compete against each other like we had a bit of a special group there where we were all like pushing each other we were we all was, yeah, yeah yeah like it was, it was pretty it was pretty special special i mean it, you know, look looking back on it now and seeing like to what to your point like not everybody makes it there's guys on there that probably had a chance to you know make a couple steps forward after and, and like you said i mean you know we were all there pulling the rope together which gave us the yeah. opportunity to kind of take that next yeah. next hop you know yeah for sure for sure i mean yeah like again like when you're surrounded by better players, they automatically push you to the next level and making you better players, you know? So like, that's why, like, like there's no place, there's no better place to play in OHL than Kitchener, in my opinion, you know, I've seen the, you know, the, the rivalry against London and all that, you know, like, as you see, like the good players, they want to come to the good organization, good city, you know? So it was, it was, it was worth every, every penny, you know, to, to play in, uh, in, in Kitchener. It was, just too bad you know we didn't go further you know that's it's just we were so good and it just sometimes it just doesn't work you know sometimes uh sometimes it doesn't go your way no exactly and i think that it's those are sometimes the saddest years that it happens because you know i don't you look you look back on it it'd be nice to now (laughs) 
you know, I think you could probably attest to this too. You look back now, you know, in our first couple of years pro and even in junior, you go and watching the video and trying to eat, reanalyze everything. Everything was still in the VHS tapes. Now it's so easy to go back and watch stuff yeah. and see how things, you know, could have transpired. Yeah. Because, you know, our, like you said, I mean, our team was, our team was awesome. And we you know what's so funny. Yeah. yeah. You know, what's so funny when you're saying that the, the, the VR watching on a cassette, the videos like the other day, uh, I have a Twitter. I don't use it as much. Uh, somebody, maybe actually, it may have been a Kitchener. They post a game from a yeah. playoff, yeah, from playoff uh, against London. You know, I'm like, I haven't seen any games like when I was younger, growing up. So like, I, I turned it on. I actually end up watching it. You know, it's just yeah. like you said. It's incredible to see that. You know, like the technology, like the videos. It wasn't very clear, but you, you know, <laughs> but again, you were. The, both teams were stuck. You know, like both, all lot most of the guys. You know, yeah. they made it to to the next level. It was. Uh, it was actually interesting to see, you know, like I haven't, you know, watched any of those games in the past whatsoever, but yeah, it, was, uh, it was interesting to see both lineups yeah. in London, you know, it was, yeah. it was a playoff game too. And I think the game that he posted, it, 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 we lost like, like bad, like that one game, I think it was. Yeah. You know, it's London. funny you mentioned that. We, <laughs> I was, uh, I think that's gotta be one of the coolest things that they do right now. I mean, selfishly for us who have been done playing, right. Being able to kind of go back into the archive and watch that. Um, I mean, I, I didn't get through that full game. I watched the first period and my children were running around. So I'm glad I didn't watch the end of it. But the thing, <laughs> the thing that's, uh, the thing that's so cool is like, you, you, you forget, I think it, you know, obviously playing through in the American league and in the NHL, like you forget how good that hockey was and how, how much it prepared us to go to the next level and how, I mean, watching that playoff game, like how intense it was with the fan, mm -hmm. how the other yeah. team was playing. And as you, as you mentioned, like, I mean, you look at London and us and essentially it was like, it was like playing an American hockey league team at that point. And with the yep, lockout yep. that happened before, and I think that if somebody asked me this the other day and, I, and I'd love to get your opinion on it as well. Like, you know, how was the jump from the Ontario league to pro? Yeah. And I think we were so much more prepared for that going from, you know, the Ontario hockey league going into our first professional season at that time, because, or at least, because I, I, I might have left a year earlier than you did, right? You yes, yes. Yeah. Me. Like, it was interesting for me because that was that lockout year, right? So you had all of those guys that were there. They were stacked. The teams were really good. So you were really pretty much kind of used to playing against guys who were like, like, I mean, look at the teams in London and Kitchener that we were on. I mean, we probably had what, like, between the two of us, seven guys jump right into the NHL. Like the and he like impact players with, you know, Carter, Richards, Clarkson, yeah. uh, you know, Shrimp, all those guys that were at Perry, yeah. that were on the other Ball team. And, yeah, all these guys. All yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, they were impact players kind of in, in the immediacy of their NHL lives. So it was a, it was an interesting jump. I mean, how was uh, how was your uh, transaction from uh, OHL to pro? I like to know, and I'll tell you my opinion. How how will my yeah? I, I think that year helped I, for for sure. Like yeah. I didn't find it to be um, as big of a jump as I had, but I as big of a jump as it the people were saying that it was going to be. But again, I think I had two lucky scenarios in that in that aspect, right? I think one was the amount of play the, the type of players we were playing against that were stacked up in the Ontario League at the time. Two, I mean, I was I was somewhat close to home, and and three, you know, we had a we had a younger kind of cerebral style coaching staff in Providence at the time yeah. Yeah. that really I I would say really helped me get out of the gate quick and gave me yeah. an opportunity to kind of succeed and get and get the confidence going quick because yeah. as all players, you know, we're built on confidence, right? You're yeah. built on and how you get it is obviously the the biggest question mark and the biggest tool, but you know, that definitely helped out. So I didn't think it was too, too bad. Obviously, then it kind of goes like this and you got yeah. to find a way. Yeah. But um, I think those things helped out. What about you? I mean, like, it's funny when you're saying that because I remember, like, when, when you when you left uh, the Kitchener, you started in the Providence for a few games and that pretty much year right after. No, no, no. I mean, the same year. You already got called up to NHL, right? You, yeah. Yeah, so you played a bunch of games in uh, uh, Providence and then you get to play with Boston. See, like... Like you're saying, like for every player is different. I remember my experience, like obviously when you, you know, we both were a high picks first round. Uh, 
So, you know, they all have a high expectation from you. So I remember like me going to camp and, uh, you know, to the Red Wings and I uh, had a really good camp. So in, a, in your head, you know, you're thinking like, you know, this, you know there's a chance they're going to keep me up. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually remember I played four games. I think I had three points or something. So mentally I'm thinking like, well, why would they send me down, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so they ended up sending me down. And I remember I had the worst year in my career. I, I, I almost decided to leave to play in Czech halfway through the season because just, you know, the transaction uh, from, you know, playing in a junior hockey and going to uh, pro, it's, it's a big step. You know, some players may think and not some, you know, for me, it was a big step, you know, from the juniors to pro. So it took me, uh, you know, it took me a little while, obviously, you know, it took me three years to play in AHL until I get my first cold up, you know, like, because again, I don't think I was ready, uh, you know, like, uh, but once, once I got to, you know, uh, figure out the AHL level, it was a, such a small step from the AHL going to NHL, you know? So for me, that was a little hard, a little longer transaction, definitely from that, from the OHL becoming a pro. It was, was a big step for me. How was the communication with the wings at the time when you when you came in? Because I think this is, to my opinion, actually now going through it all and and seeing like there's so many similarities and so many differences within it. But I think there's like there's like a root on a lot of it, in my opinion, on how you kind of try to attempt to set guys up for success. But like when you were in and obviously going through that and staying down in the minors for the three straight years or so, like how was the communication with the team where they were like constantly talking, get, making sure that you were still. Yeah. Yeah. Dialing. I mean, this is how, this is how Detroit was, or I, maybe you'll fill me in as well. They all knew that who we are or myself, you, they all knew they were very skilled defensemen, you know, very offensive players. So to me, like I didn't get that at the beginning. I was always trying to press or to make the next level to, to be good offensively, which I, they knew I had that, but they were more focusing on the defensive sides of the ice, you know, how to play on the right side of the puck. So again, like they didn't care if you had uh, four assists at the game, they, they wanted to see you in the AHL, see if you can go get the puck first, win the battle, break out, you know, box people out in front of the neck, things like this, you know? So that was the biggest step that I had to get adjusted because again, like, you know, you're, you're playing with men's, you know, like things you, you, you turn the puck over and next thing you know, it ends in your, in your net, you know, it's not like the OHL. Well, you get by it, but in the next level, you know, you turn the puck over or you don't box the guy out going to the net, you know, those things, those little things that I had to, had to learn took me a little longer than, mm -hmm. uh, than uh, for others, you know, it's like for you, like you were saying, you, you jumped in right, right away. Uh, and you were, you were, you know, you were, you were in NHL, you know, you're ready to go. It's, it, it's interesting though. And I think some of that, you know, sometimes that goes to the detriment. And I think I had a little bit of that as well. Right. I mean, you, you know, granted in, in the scenario where Boston was at the time, like there was a complete and utter changeover of the entire organization at the time from when I got drafted to realistically when my first year ended up starting. Right. So like they, you know, the general manager was gone, the coaching staff was gone that actually drafted you. And there was a lot of that same conversations, right? Like you get, and I think that this is kind of that mental aspect where I think teams, you know, nowadays are so much more adept in, in making sure that line of communication is open to kind of have those conversations and understand because there was that exact same hurdle with me, right? Like you, you get in, you get a couple games, you have a good first American league season. Like I think my first American league year, you know, make the, make the all-star team, you get a bunch of call-ups, you're feeling pretty good about yourself, right? But then there's that other side of it where it's the exact same things you said. I mean, they want to see certain boxes being able to check and you really kind of have to have that, that, that support system behind you that's, that's giving you all of that information, right? So you can take yeah. it in and understand it the right way. And Donnie Sweeney was our, um, was our player development guy in Boston and was super helpful on that side of it. But there was massive mental hurdle because you're having this battle within yourself of within your head. And, and now, you know, as you go through it and you hear the conversations now and you're watching the game again, you see that like, you know, you're not, you don't necessarily need to be that player. You are you're in the NHL level, even though, you know, for, for myself, you're kind of proving it a little bit and getting the inch on, on that side of it. There's this whole other piece of the game that you need to be able to figure out and, and meld them both together, right. To be yeah. able to actually make it work. And I think, you know, that was a, that was, I think the mental battle for me 
was trying to figure out, you know, okay, what do they want? And, but also not overanalyzing it and then just going and doing your thing and playing your game. Right. I think, you know, that was the, one of the hurdles I, I remember having throughout the time, right. It's like each organization I went to that happened to, right? you know, you go in, you have general manager gone, coaching staff gone, everybody gone within a couple of years you're there, which is, which is another battle that, uh, you know, it's from my, from my standpoint, I think it's so important you know, to talk to so many kids now that are going through it. Like there's so much other stuff that goes with this. You just gotta, you know, continue to grind and continue to get better. And it's so much easier to do now. I think from a visual perspective with the access to video and all that stuff and the training yeah. that kids are in now, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, how about, uh, can you tell us about that? Uh, the move, are you still capable of doing that? Uh, the shootout move behind your back? I saw, <laughs> Your son is almost, uh, yeah. you almost got that figured out. Yeah, my God. Are people doing that? Hey, how crazy is that? Uh, that's the only thing I got, right? Is just that move to go out of the YouTube came around just at the perfect time for that that's, stupid move. That's I all you need. That's all you needed, man. It's going to last forever. That's, you know, I haven't seen anybody doing that these days, move like that, you know? You know, what's crazy is like, so I have a nine year old. So, guys, you guys got to check it out. Uh, the last shot, Mad Last Shot, All Star Game uh, move. So, you guys know. Yeah, exactly. You know what's crazy though is now I've got, I've got a nine year old son, and the things that these kids are now doing with the puck are things that we were like, you know, thinking about at, in junior at seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old. Like their their thought process and their skills with the puck right now are just incredible, huh? Incredible. It's it's because they like you said the, the things change so much. They have access to it. They have these yeah. skating coaches. They have the skill coaches. When we were entering, whether it was the OHL or turning into pro, like things weren't out there yet. Things weren't out there. Now you see that you know, like you said, it's just so much, so much out there. So much knowledge. So many, so many little things that uh, you know you can work on and get better at. As you know, I, I'm sure you you even remember when we were going to uh, camps like the NHL camp, like. I didn't skate all summer long right. back yeah. then. You know, you would you would put your skates on two weeks legit before the camp starts. The older guys, they they, they would put the skates on first day of training camp. Of camp. Now, yeah. as you see, now as, as you see the, 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 you know, all the pros, even the junior, the junior kids, the pro, they skate all summer long because yeah. it's, you know, that's how it is. Right. What do you feel as like, and this was always interesting to me because again, going back to the access point, right? I think everyone was trying to look at the skills side of the game at that point, but it wasn't obviously as prolific as it is now where every team has a designated skills coach. Guys have got their skills coaches in the summer that they're going mm-hmm. to see. There's a, a coach for everything I feel like now, but Europe was always on kind of the cutting edge of all of that stuff and how the youth programs were functioning and how they, you know, you guys, you know, the trajectory up to the pro level. And, you know, there was always a high demand on the skill side. Like, what do you feel now? Do you feel that it's almost like, listen, we were, we've been doing this stuff forever back in the day and now they're just starting to implement it in this segmented level, right? Like that's kind of how I always, always viewed it. It's like you guys had the command on that stuff way back in the day. And I think we were always playing catch up on it. I mean, where I'm from, they, they just start doing this, these, uh, this, this skill coaches, this power skating coaches. So in Czech, it hasn't been much you know, popular. And that's why the Czech hockey is kind of behind lately because the development of the kits and everything. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but like I said, or you said, you know, you've been to Sweden, you know, you've been, uh, you've been to Swiss, you know, obviously uh, Sweden, big, uh, big hockey land, you know, so they're doing something right. They're doing something right there that we, we were just so behind, uh, you know, you can, you can talk about it, you know, you playing, in Sweden, uh, you. How was? Uh, what about Russia? How was? Uh, how was the experience in Russia? It was Russia. <laughs> it was Russia. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That is the comment you get from everybody. Listen, I mean, I think the, the most interesting. I loved it over there. I mean, in a sense that it was such a great life experience. Like I was in the middle of Siberia, not on the greatest team. What uh, uh, What team were you in, Russia? What What was the no, team? I forget. Novos Kuznetsk. Novos Kuznetsk. Okay, yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, listen, we, we were, we were kind of a bottom of the barrel team. There was yeah. two, two guys who had been through the NHL though, that were on there, German Titov and uh, Valerie Zelopukin. Zelopukin was the GM and German Titov was a coach. So, you, you know, the nice part was, is like, I knew I was going over again, to kind of to your point coming over there. I mean, this would probably have been the most comparable to what you had coming into Kitchener, right? Like just kind of fish out of water socially and not being mm-hmm. able to 
the language yeah. and you're coming into a bunch of people demand speaking English, right? Like that was what it was like over there. I mean, they don't pull any punches to, to try to cater to you as the American, especially in, in that portion of Russia. So, I mean, it was, it was nuts. I mean, you know, the, the interesting thing was, is, and I don't know if you've, you've heard the same stuff, but like, you know, they, everybody says all these horror stories or outlandish stories about playing in Russia, right? And you never believe that they're going to actually be like that, but they were, they were as bad as outlandish and real as every single one of those as you could have. But the cool thing was, I mean, listen, even though we weren't a great team and it was an awesome experience, I mean, we put, yeah. we had, you know, being a bad team and being a poor team before I got there, we had the first overall pick in the draft. So we got uh, Kirill Kaprizov was that mm-hmm. first pick. So, we, you know, played with him, played with Ilya Sorokin, who's a new goalie mm-hmm. for the Islanders. So it's kind of interesting with the way that it's set up over there. You get these kids super young. I mean, they were 17 years old at that time. Uh-huh. So you're kind of playing with some some young up and coming guys, which is which was good. But man, what an experience. Well, it was worth it because I'm sure you came home with uh, full bags of cash, man. Like everyone's saying. <laughs> oh, I, my, my bags of cash were a little lighter than they should have been. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> waiting for one to come, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, it, like you said, you hear those scary, uh, yeah. scary stories, not getting paid on time, you know, things like that. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's part of it. I mean. Have you ever thought of going over there? Uh, I did. I, I We had some offers to go, but uh, – I don't know. At that time, you know, I was, you know, focusing to, you know, try to remain in NHL. It just, you know, there's a lot of shady that we had, we had some, we had one deal pretty much on the table, you know, like we were ready to go. And the next day, like out of, somebody just out of the blue just said, no, like everything was ready. We were ready to fly out. And just next right. day, like, Hey, sorry, it just didn't work out. I'm like, what do you mean? Didn't work out. We're prepared. We have tickets. We're going, yeah. <laughs> um, like you said, you know, that, that doesn't happen. And, in, uh, in, uh, in the North America, you know, that doesn't happen, you know, but, but I saw that you were playing in a Switzerland, Switzerland probably was, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing was probably your favorite. I'm, I'm assuming your favorite. Country yeah, to play. Switzerland was awesome, man. I mean, it was yeah. an amazing experience just lifestyle wise and yeah. just the entirety of the whole thing, right? We had a good team again, like, you know, lucking out is the reason you first go over there is because of the lockout, right? Same thing. I think we were both in very similar scenarios at a certain point in our careers you know, trying to stay in North America, trying to make it work. You know, I had a bad knee injury before that lockout and, you know, needed to play. So I went over there and then the lockout happened. So the league was awesome. Right. And you got the opportunity to go over and play, you got NHL players over there, you know, and it, it was great. I mean, we had Mark Crawford was our coach. who was, a, who was an amazing guy. You know, he's, a, he's super intense, but, uh, but it was great. I mean, what a, what a place to play. Yeah. And, yeah, especially for the family, you know, like if you, when yeah. you get older and then, and, and, you know. And the hockey's good too. I don't think yeah, people for sure. how good the for hockey sure. is. Like the Swiss hockey, they've done a lot um, to build it up over the last few years uh, from their youth program all the way up. And like, you know, they're going to be, it's interesting, like, you know, the Olympics, World Championships, people would keep talking about it, right? Like, oh man, Swiss is making a, um, yeah, Sw- Switzerland's making a, you know, a push on everything right now. Um but it's like, that's been in the works for a really long time. Right. And, and, yeah. and people have been, you know, really kind of, you know, pushing things to move forward and it's no secret why they're in the, in the mix as, as things continue to move forward. But um, I mean, uh, like, like, I mean it, playing it, in check, like what, what, how was playing in check kind of at your home? Uh, check. It was, it was good. It was, it was that time with, you know, where we kind of waited too long. Uh, you know, that was the time when we also had the opportunity to go to Russia, that we were ready to go to Russia and, uh, you know, that got, you know, like I said, next day out of the blue, just, you know, got swept up of the table. But the reason why I decided to uh, play the, in Czech, it was because my brother, my brother was playing in uh, Pilsen that time. Yeah. And uh, there was an opportunity came up. One of their defensemen got hurt. So they asked me if I would sign a contract there for a month, having the option leaving and go somewhere else. So I went, you know, for the main reason was to play with my brother. And uh, believe it or not, we end up playing a year and a half together because you know it's just you know you have your you have you have, you have your brother you know I don't know if you guys ever played with each other's but you know having a brother and playing with him in the same team it was something you know I will never forget it was that was the main reason why I decided to stay and check and uh, play with him. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I mean, I think that's yeah. one thing now looking back on it. Like I wish I was able to do, I and mean, we had a couple near misses or near hits. I yeah, would say. yeah. 
you know, in contract wise, the end of my career when I was kind of, you know, more solidified playing in the American Hockey League with the kids and you know, battling some injuries. And I think we, we talked about it pretty in-depthly about the possibility of going in, you know, again, one of those things that just doesn't work out. Um, but, it, you know, I mean, I think for you guys too, one of the most interesting things that I've always noticed is that it's so cool with how European hockey works is the ability to go to all those international tournaments and how important that is throughout the year and the time that they make for, I mean, yeah. talk a little bit about that because I mean, just for you guys to be able to kind of continually go back and, you know, represent your country. I mean, there's yeah. nothing like it and it's just different for the North American guys, right? There's only those yeah. tournaments that you have and you guys have the ability to yeah. consistently do that. You mean, too. you mean like uh, during the season, like yeah. when they have those uh, national breaks, yeah, it's 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 good, man. It's it's really good. Like I said, like these these national breaks or or even these championships, uh, they're very big in Europe for some reason. Obviously, you know the NHL guys, they're not looking so into it. You know when they get invited, it's more like uh, they'll send the young guys uh, to kind of you know develop themselves. You know, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. You, you you've seen it. You know how the fans are passion passionate. You know how. How, how they go crazy, you know, like you, you played in Mannheim too. And, uh, you know, playing, I, I was in, the, I played in Cologne two years yeah. ago. So that was something that I'm never going to experience in my life. You know, the fans, how they were passionate, you know, like one time that was, we lost 17 games in a row, man. Like we were, we were driving home from Dieseldorf, which was a big rivalry game. And we lost that game. And as we were coming back with the, with the bus, the fans were like in the front of the ring. They wouldn't let us in. And they were actually laying in front of the bus, you know, they wouldn't let us in. So they were like, they were the hooligans too, you know, like because yeah. the, the fans, they're the same ones. They go to soccer games, you know, so they all come to the hockey games. So like, and as you lose 17 games in a row, like I was scared to drive home that someone's going to break in my car and like get me out, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, the fans yeah. are very passionate and they love it, whether it's a national games or, or you know, they're, they're just passionate. They're very passionate. I think that's the one thing that I, it gets lost a little bit from the North American fan over there is how intense that the, the fandom is for those yeah. teams. It, there is literally nothing like it. And it is one of the most yeah. exciting places to, it, it's one of the most exciting experiences you can have as a player. Right. And you have, like you were just mentioning the soccer side of things where right? you have some, you know, insight into what their daily world is like on, on, the, on that exact statement right like if you're not doing well like they're going bananas like we same situation in uh in in switzerland and in sweden you know we're coming back not doing well like they're rocking the bus as you're going yeah, in, yeah. you get out yeah. of the bus, throwing stuff at the bus you're like oh boy we better pick it up i here. was a part of it i was a part of it man i like i said yeah. like they it's it's crazy that's just how they are man it's uh yeah but it's what funny. I, so anyway so we got to the ring we got to the ring they finally let us in so, okay, so we got to unpack your gear. It's not like, you know, in NHL that everything gets taken care of. We have to unpack your stuff. Yeah. And guess what? They wouldn't leave us. They wouldn't let us leave the ring. So they were like front of the ring. So, you know, from a, a 20 minutes uh, away game that we should have been home at one, uh, 11 o'clock after the game, we ended up being home at 2 o'clock because they were just wouldn't let us leave the ring, man. Like, oh, it, was, a- uh, it was crazy, man. But, you know, but those are good times, good times. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? That's the stuff that you never forget, right? I mean, I think it's funny now, like, you know, being done for a few years now, it's, and, and there's so many great things to look back on, but it's, and it's so cliche, but it's the stuff like that, that you remember being with the guys and being in the room and the stories and, and yeah. whatnot that you never forget, right? I think we, you know, and, and you're still, you're still going with this thing, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, it goes, to, it goes to show like, you know, how quick it goes and into to relish all those opportunities that you have with the great teammates that yeah. you, you, you go on. And realistically, I mean, again, like bringing it back to the Kitchener side, like how fortunate we were to have just such a like-minded group that we all kind of stay in contact now. I mean, we lucked out with social media being as, as uh, advantageous as it is at this moment. So we know what guys are doing in their lives, which is yeah. so cool. And, I, and you know what, I mean, what, you know, well, back then, back, back then it was the computer room and uh, yeah. had, uh, three computers <laughs> and everyone was MSN back then, you know, that was, yeah. the, that was the main thing, you know. There oh was, my uh, goodness, I know, man. And then, and then the dreadful walk to the video room with Pete and, and Spotter with the big screen going up to guys. Yeah, well. yeah, like, yeah. And we're all talking on the way up there like, oh man, what do you think? Who's getting it today? Who's going to yeah. be the star? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, again, like, like when you talk about Kitchener, like even... Uh, 
for me as a coming from Czech, like for me, it was like, wow, what a facility, what a ring, you know, like, you know, 7,000 people were fitting, fitting their back there, full ring, you know, nice gym, you know, everything was like already like for me as a kid, not knowing, not seeing, I already felt like I was like in NHL, you know, like we also obviously playing for the Rangers, the same logo, you know, kind of felt like, wow, like this is like, you know, I made it this far that already felt inside like, wow, I'm the player already. I'm, you know, it just, for me, it was a little different because I came from such a small town, you know, not seeing anything like that ever, you know, not, you know. Well, and I think that, that too, I mean, you look at what they've been able to do in, in, in kind of the top tier junior programs, right? And I think, you know, when you're going through it, you know, I think we realize it because our goal is obviously to make the NHL, but all of those things are developing you to be prepared for what's coming next, right? And I think, you know, obviously there's nothing like stepping out into that 18,000 seat building for the first time in the NHL and realizing how yeah. big the holy moment it is you know but yeah. kitchener and everything that they had there i mean gave us all the tools that we possibly could need to to, yeah. to level up our games and whatnot right and i think it's i mean like you said i mean the facilities the whole nine yards how everybody handled themselves how professional they were i mean it was i don't know probably very similar to your thoughts like it, it there wasn't much difference between walking into that whole scenario and how everybody handled themselves and the respect factor and some of the facilities that there was going into pro hockey right i mean 100 percent, 100 percent mindset yeah like i said we're, we were very fortunate to you know to play in a, such a great organization but like, even, like, when I came from over the seas, you know, like, I was, like, I never wore a visor. That was the first time I had to wear a visor, you know. I remember guys were, like, strapped. They didn't have a helmet strapped up in a warm-up, wearing a gum, you know, things like this. Like, when if I would wear a gum in check in a practice or, or, or in a morning skate, like, the coach would throw me out of the practice, you know. That's just – so I was already, like, in my head, wow, this is, this is, this is real. This is, uh, this is legit, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you're right. And then, you know, the other thing, the other aspect too is, I mean, even, you know, coming from the, the national program, right? I mean, you had a little bit of fighting in there and whatnot, but then you're going up there and I mean, that's a different level with some of those guys that were throwing, throwing punches around. I mean, and especially with where the league and the game was at that time. I mean, I was looking back at some of the numbers when we were talking. At, so, so now this is interesting. Cam Jansen is, which is from St. Louis. So I've got to, he was like one of the, one of the only people, him and Jan Stasny that I knew when I moved to town. And so we were talking about kind of the fight numbers that guys were getting into back then. And I mean, those guys were fighting like 50, 60 times a year. It was like almost every game. Like it's not. That was the reason why I wanted to watch the game that uh, they've been yeah. by the Rangers. That like, I don't know how many penalties has been thrown up during right. that one game. Like I remember Keith, for, Keith jumped from the penalty box, immediately just like, like elbow somebody in the face, like out of the nowhere. Exactly. You know, then you go to five on three, you know, it was a penalty after penalty, but it was, yeah, it was, you know, slashing, you know, it was cross shaking. Like, it was like, like you were like me, I was scared sometimes, you know, as bad as going to sound like, you know, playing against like some of the meatheads in that, uh, in Sarnia, against Sarnia. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was, uh, oh, it was so fun as a, in, I don't know what you think too, like, as you, you look back on it, like the type of players that, that uh, you know, that we were kind of on a higher skilled end, it, the way that the game has done this kind of arc right now into where it was, it's, it's always interesting to me of like, man, like what, what if the game was like that back then? Like, cause, cause it was like, it was a different mindset, right? I mean, before it was before the lockout, it was before the lockout and all the rules changed to start trying to get the game to where it is today. Right. And so we hit it at a real interesting time where it kind of didn't, it hadn't yet made its full arc into what it is now where it's skill. And I mean, you look at some of the sizes of the defensemen that they are now versus what they were looking at before. I mean, you know, this conversations that they were having, like you gotta be X size, you gotta be this big, you gotta be tough, this mm -hmm. tough, that. And you look at the way guys are defending now comparatively to how it was taught back then. I mean, it's a completely different world. It's a completely different world, right? And yeah. so it's almost interesting to kind of be like, man, what, you know, what would that have translated to back in that time? Like, how much mm -hmm. more space would you have had? How, and, and, you know, same with the guys who played in the NHL for many years, right, and went through the same thing. But, you know, at that time in junior, you're still kind of scratching and clawing onto that old school mindset. And then the, then the thing just flips on a dime. I mean, remember, you couldn't even touch a guy when they were coming down the wall if they dumped the puck in. You just tapped him. It was like, Whoo! you're right. You're right. Well, and you said that. You're right. I remember now, like, uh, that was my first year when 
it was still the old rules that, you know, the cross checks, the penalties yeah. and everything, you know, then the, the going into the next year was like, you couldn't even touch the guy, you know, like, yeah. everything changed, you know, like yeah. now all of a sudden you saw the guys were like putting up points left and right, you know, there was no penalty. There was no penalty. Yeah. It, it was, and even now to the extreme that it's gone. I mean, that, that has been the most interesting piece about it for me is that it, 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 it took a couple of years for that to really settle in. Like it was probably not until like, I don't know, maybe 20, 12 that it really 2013 where it kind of started yeah. getting into like a you yeah. know okay this is the way the game is and then it's then it's gone even further since then to now yeah. right? now yeah. it's just and you know I, I, as as somebody who's now watching and not playing i mean it's a fun game to watch now on the nhl with how fast it is you know like, well hopefully uh hopefully when things get back to normal maybe we'll get uh invited to play some alumni games in uh, in kitchener i don't know yeah if, uh, Exactly. If they ever think about doing that or if they've been doing it in the past, it would be, be kind of cool to, you know, uh, you know, play with the guys that we – or us that, you know, we played together, we grew up together. That would be something maybe at the Rangers if they're hearing out, uh, yeah. you know, oh, to, put, absolutely. to put together, you know. Absolutely. That would be a blast. So what are you doing now? You, you're going to start trying to you, – you got one more year that you're going to well, get through this, you know, cluster yeah. of year that everybody's yeah. been in, right? But you're going to keep well, playing it. I like to keep playing again. Like this was a, such a uh, year for everybody. Um, uh, again, that uh, we just had a baby. We just had a boy, first uh, baby, uh, six yeah. weeks now. Right. And uh, we decided, uh, you know, around Christmas time that, you know, it's not a good idea to go to Europe uh, while my wife was pregnant and everything would go, everything was going on in Europe. It's pretty bad. So we decided to, you know, to take the year off. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough that uh, there's a facility, good, good, good ice program everywhere I go in Michigan. So I've been kind of staying ready and hopefully uh, things if, if things get better in the summer, uh, you know, I like to go play. We like to go play obviously somewhere where it makes sense for all three of us now. And uh, and uh, if it if it if it doesn't make any sense, then I'm, you know, considered to retire. But uh, again, like I'm not I'm healthy. I have no issues whatsoever. And I like to go. I like to play. Love yeah. It. Well, what about you? I know you've been down for a couple of years uh, yeah. and I see you're coaching. Uh, is that is that right? No. So I'm working for uh, a company called the Oakview Group. So we're facility development, facility management, sports and entertainment facilities. OK, um, so it, it's 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 interesting for me because I get to stay involved in hockey, but I'm on the business side. Um, so we're developing the new arena for the Seattle, uh, oh, wow. as we brought there, we, we actually brought the, the Seattle Kraken into existence through that. No development. Way. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. I'm very excited to, uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I mean, and now it's fun, right? Like, so we've got Seattle UBS, a building for the New York Islanders, um, one in Austin, Texas in partnership with the university down there. And it's, it's, it's it's pretty cool now because one, I get to stay involved with hockey, but two, all these buildings are now going to be opening up for like this up next uh, mm -hmm. hockey season. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of exciting news. And I think for me, you know, I get to check the box is still being involved in the game, but on the business side, which is from yes. my mindset, kind of the next mountain to climb. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, with Seattle coming in, man, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Right. I mean, I, I think we're hopeful that we can replicate what they've done in Vegas. Um, you know, mm -hmm. so people are, that was the first time in Vegas. It was the first time it happened in a long, long time, right. An expansion draft and expansion mindset. So now, you know, I think the general managers are ready for what's going to happen. So it's going to be, it, it's going to be interesting, but I think from a success standpoint and in a market standpoint on where, on where Seattle is, man, I, I mean, it's, it's going to, it's going to be, I think we're top three in the NHL and sales already. And the team hasn't even played a game. Right. So it's going to be an amazing yeah. experience. You know, what a town, um, so yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. That's awesome, man. I, everyone's excited. Everyone's excited for this. Yeah. That's awesome, oh, man. Well, Hey, I think I could probably do this for another three hours. We got to yeah. set one, one of these things up and maybe get I got to go. I got to go. Uh, I got to go uh, take care of the little guy. He's been awesome, six months man. now and you know how it is. You're parenting yourself. Uh, you have already two. And, uh, we're just beginners. We're just beginners. That's it, buddy. Hey, great catching up, man. You really, too, man. You really too, man. You. Stay well, stay healthy. And uh, I hope I get to see you down the road at some All point. Right. Love it.